Praise the Lord, everybody. Give thanks to God, who is our prayer provider. We thank God for all of you this morning. And uh, the month of February is the month that we celebrate uh, our Black History uh, Month. And, and uh, this morning we will have Tara Pugh. She will come forth uh, with our Black History Month. Please let us give an ear to hear. The moment anyone tries to demand or degrade you in any way, you have to know how great you are. Nobody would bother to beat you down if you were not a threat. Ms. Cicely Tyson. Today's Black History Moment will highlight, the li will highlight the life and legacy of this great woman. Cicely Tyson was born December 19, 1924 to West Indian parents in Harlem, New York. She was an American actress as well as a fashion model. She was discovered by an ebony photographer and began a very successful and lucrative modeling career. But her heart wasn't in modeling. She told her parents that she really wanted to act. But her parents being an extremely religious family, they did not allow or agree with it, which led to her being kicked out of her home. But, but that did not stop her. She decided to act anyway. She chose to only portray strong African-American leads, but because of this choice, work was very sparse for her early in her career. She did get her first acting, her acting role in 1951 on the, on the television series, Frontiers of Faith. Her first big role came as Rebecca Morgan from the 1972 movie, Salander. She was nominated for a Golden Globe and an Academy Award for this um, for this role. Her acting career spanned over seven decades. Some of her later work include, included The Help, Medea's Family Reunion, Why Did I Get Married Too, and Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Some of her television work included Gunsmoke, The Bill Cosby Show, Soul Train, Roots, Touched by an Angel, How to Get Away with Murder, House of Cards, and Madam Secretary. Ms. Cicely Tyson appeared in 29 films. She appeared in 69 different television shows. She played 15 different roles in theater. She also spent one year as a radio host on the Sears Radio Theater in 1979. She had two Academy Award nominations. She won one. She was nominated for a Golden Globe. She was nominated 17 times for an, Emmy, for an Emmy Award. She won three. Two of them were for her role in the, autograph, the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman. She won a Tony Award as well as a Peabody Award. She received the Presidential Award of Freedom from Barack Obama in 2016. She received the NAACP Image Award for the Best Actress as well as Supporting Actress. She was inducted into the Television Hall of Fame in 2020. She has received honorary degrees from Clark Atlanta University, Columbia University, Howard University, and Morehouse College, even though that is an all-male HBCU. She also has a magnet school in East Orange, New Jersey, named after her, the Cicely Tyson School of Performing and Fine Arts. Tyson's memoir, Just As I Am, was published January 26, 2021, and two days later, she passed away. While promoting her book, she was asked, how do you want to be remembered? Tyson said, I've done my best. That is all. Thank you.
We are living in times now, when you look around in the world, there's so much evil forces, things that are going on, and can we need to always, as the writer said, pray. Pray, he said, without uh, ceasing. Williams Brockley, a writer, he translated this te text here. He states that he should say, make it a habit to give thanks for everything. Some people uh, feel as though that they don't have anything to be thankful for. And when I don't have uh, God seeing that like he is not blessing me, then I don't have anything to thank God for. But the writer tells us that we must continue day and night to pray. Pray without ceasing. And giving God thanks. Whatever the circumstances might be, whether you down or whether you up, whether you feel like praying or you don't feel like praying, praying unto God is unconditional. We must always take the time out to give thanks to God. Thank him for all things. Get into the habit of praying. The question we asked this morning, when was the last that you prayed? Some people, they pray when only when they need, I need for something. But we ought to pray when we are not in need. Huh? When we don't need anything. When you are not sick, you should pray. We should all be the Bible tells us that we should always pray. It is imperative that we develop the habit of praying and being thankful at all times and in under all circumstances. No matter what the circumstances might be, we must make it a habit to pray to God. William, William's law uh, said, for it is certain that Whatever seems calamity happening to you, if you think and praise God for it, huh, it will turn it into a blessing. Uh, I mean, you know, when, when, you, when you, things are not right in your life and we are still worshiping God, we're still praising God, huh, through your praising and through your worshiping the thing that was hindering you, God will come through and bless you. We should always be thankful unto God. Can I get a witness? Amen. Yeah. We must develop. If we develop the habit of being thankful at all times, we will open the door so God can provide divine assistance during our life disappointments and our and tragedy that pops up in our life. You are consistent in praying to God. Yeah, many biblical, many biblical scholars, uh, characters, had disappointments in their lives. But they never ceased to be thankful unto God. Because they knew that, that, that God is able to deliver them from whatever circumstances they are under. Whatever that they are going through in life, they continue to worship God. They didn't become disheartened to the point that where they will say, well, I'm going to stop serving the God, serving God. I'm not going to serve him today. I'm not going to fellowship today. I'm not going to worship today. I'm not going to pray him because God has not stopped by and delivered me from my problems. And God is good. Yeah, Job was one. Job 
was the one the Bible talks about. He went through a uh, hardship, much hardship. He lost his whole entire family just in one day. And when Job received the news from his messenger, one at a time, you let some bad news come. It comes again, and the next thing you know, there's more news, bad news. And uh, before you know it, uh, there's more bad news. Bad news sometimes travel. Uh, and, 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 but yet still, uh, look at Job. Take a watch. Look at Job. Job, when he received all the news, the bad news that he had lost his family, the Bible says he fell down on his knees and he began to worship. God. And it, this is what I'm talking about. We must not stop loving and giving thanks into God. We must get into the habit of continuing to pray and continue to give thanks into God. Job continued to worship. He continued to serve God, no matter what the circumstances might be. He said, God is my refuge and God is my strength. Present help in time of Need. May we get into the habit of showing uh, appreciation to God. When trials and tribulation come into our lives, we will still be thankful unto God. The habit of giving thanks will increase our capacity to love. We are commanded to have a uh, 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 love. We are commanded to love others as. We love ourselves. If we are in the habit of being thankful, our love for our God will increase as we recognize how much he has done for us. Just because a trial came into my life or in your life, I'm still thankful unto God. And I appreciate his love for me. Let us recognize and remember that the ungrateful life is a self-destructive way of life which hurt you and it hurt others that's around you. Some people are ungrateful. Some are ungrateful. They can never see any good in their lives. They can never see anything good that God is doing for them. But just to be able to hear the gospel being preached this morning. That's a blessing. Just to be able to rise and to get out of your bed uh, this morning. That's a blessing. It's a blessing when we look all around in our home or wherever you might be uh, at this hour. That, that's a blessing. It's a blessing to have your family in good health. It's a blessing. There's always, remember, there's always somebody out there that's doing worse stuff or doing worse than you are doing. My point is, don't give up. Don't give up in this faith, but continue to bless God. Continue to give thanks to God. Continue to, continue to get in the habit of praying. Back in the Old Testament, they had a habit of praying. They, they, when, they, when they're walking, when they're going through the desert, uh, 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 walking a uh, uh, distance, a long distance, they were carrying pads, pads, uh, prayer pads, uh, uh, they, they were put around their knees because they prayed so much. Amen. They, they prayed. And they always, they would pray and give thanks to God. Trials. Jesus told us that there will be trials and there will be tribulation. So be a, a good cheer. Don't think it's strange when things happen in life, when destructive things happen in life. Don't think it's strange through this pandemic now. Don't think that it's strange because of this virus and what have you. Just keep on praying. Get in the habit of still thanking God because I believe that there is a light. There is light at the end of the tunnel. See, my brothers and my sisters, See, the habit of being thankful must be learned because many times we will experience disappointments in life. Life is like this. 
Things can be going on smooth in your life today, and then here come the disappointments. Disappointments and heartaches. And the songwriter said, but don't cry. Because God, he is always standing by. And the natural reactions to, the natural reactions to disappointment is to complain and be depressed. That's the natural way. But yet still, we are children of the most high. We will still follow the script. We will still uh, uh, follow God's guideline when disappointments and hard times come. Don't let depression fall into your heart. But still, continue to pray. Continue to worship God. Continue to serve God. But when you know God and believe that he is with you, no matter what you are up against, we are thankful. Because if God is for you, who it is that can be against you? I don't, I, I don't uh, have everything. Uh, you may not have everything that you want in life, but I am thankful. Uh, what I have when you think uh, you are bad off in life, remember that there is someone somewhere doing worse off or worse off than you are. My brothers and my sisters, we must acquire the habit, acquire the habit of giving thanks at all times, at all times. Luke records, Luke records of Jesus healing 10 lepers. Luke 17, 11 through 19. Luke records Jesus healing 10 lepers, and only one developed the habit of being thankful. Out of that 10 that Jesus healed, huh? only one, Jesus, Jesus told them that, now go your way. After he healed them, Jesus said, go your way and show yourself to the priest. And all 10 began to run to go to the priest so the priest can certify them and give them a certificate that they may be able to go back into the community. But only one was thankful. Uh, and all of his suffering with leprosy, with all his suffering through leprosy for years, which is uncurable, not cured, but Jesus cured that leprosy. And out of the 10, one came back. One came back and said, Jesus of Nazareth, I want to thank you. We got to show gratitude, more gratitude than to God. It's a lot of time we find uh, we as even children of God, and especially our children. See, I, earlier I said that it has to be taught in the home, teaching a child from, from their youth uh, how to be grateful, how to be thankful. And to God for whatever you do. I remember when we was coming up in life, we didn't have everything. We didn't have everything. I wouldn't say we was poor, poor, but we didn't have everything. But yes, dear, what we did have, we were grateful and we were thankful. We were thankful to God. And we always, somebody prayed for you. Our ancestors and our parents. Huh? They pray for us. They keep praying for a better life for their children and what have you. And now that we have that better life and what have you, seeing that it's less praying. It's less praying. Right. But we should be thankful and to God for all that what God do for us, for others, for us. There are these ten lepers. One came back and said, thank you. When was the last uh, I challenge you this morning. When was the last you did a prayer of thanks? When was the last that you examined your life and looked at your life and, and look where God brought you from? Look what you was up against in the past year or the year before. When was the last you did a prayer of a thank of thanks? Huh? When was the last you thanked God? Praise God. Thank Him for all that what He do. Psalms 92 and 1 tells us it is a good thing to give thanks 
and to the Lord. Uh, that's what the writer says in Psalm. It is not a bad thing, but it is a good thing to give thanks and to the Lord. For the Lord is our creator. Uh, we must give thanks to him. Because he, he said in his word, Lo, whatever the circumstances might be, but lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of time. Not only in good times, uh, to give thanks unto God uh, and to the Lord. See, so much we serve God only when we are in good times. And good things are happening to us. Oh boy, the Lord has blessed me now. I'm happy. But in bad times, what do you do? When things not right in your life, what do you do? Huh? When you're waiting on the Lord to stop by and bless you, huh? in your waiting, are you still giving God thanks? We must get in the habit just like we uh, uh, form other habits in this walk of life. We got, we got to form the habit of giving thanks and to God. Let it be a habit. I don't have it right now. But I'm thankful. And I'm grateful unto God. For all that he do. He said it's a good thing. To give thanks unto the Lord. It is a good thing to give thanks. To others. And for others. Everybody say it's a good thing. To give thanks to others. And for others. We as the body of Christ should be thankful for one another. Husbands ought to be thankful for their wife. Wives should be thankful for the husband. Huh? Families being thankful for one another. Huh? Children thank, being thankful, being thankful huh? for one another and for their parents and what have you. Can I get a witness? Good sometimes now. You don't miss your water. You don't miss your water. Until your well run dry. As long as you have water in your well, you don't thank God. Huh? But when you miss the water, when the water dries up, huh? And then you miss it. You don't miss your water until your well run dry. Children, I want you to remember one thing. Be thankful to God for all that your parent do for you. Because one day, when they leave here, when they leave here, you don't have no regret. You be was thanking God for your parent. Thanking God for your father and your mother. Thanking God for your sister and your brother. Thanking God that you have a roof over your head. Thanking God for eternal life and salvation. In all things, give thanks and to God. And under any circumstances, we must give thanks and to God. Philippians 6 and 7. The Philippian Christians as they brought their petition and prayer before God to the throne of grace. Uh, Paul told them to make sure that they expre express thanks before they ask for anything. Before you pray, uh, before you pray and ask God for anything, first you must express thanks for what he had already done for you. You thank God. If you can't thank God for the past things, tell me how can you thank God for the future things that you are asking for? We got to throw a, show appreciation. So show appreciation to God what He has already done and what He is going and what He is going to do in your life. I, I, I can't stand it. How do you feel blessing your child when they don't show appreciation for the things that you have already done for them in their life? Always give thanks unto God because he is worthy to be praised. Thank him for what he has already done. It is a good, it is God's will for us that we develop the habit of being thankful. Being thankful at all times. Develop that habit. Develop the habit of praying. Develop the habit of, of, of studying God's word for your life so that you can live a productive life. Make it a habit of serving God. Make it a habit of fellowship. Make it a habit of worshiping God. Take on good habits. Take on good spiritual habits. Let us pray for an open eye and open eye to see his goodness.
Pray that God will help us to be thankful, particularly towards those who are helpful to us. People that who are helpful to us, those that who work hard to help us be thankful and to God. Our, our ancestors, our mothers, our parents, our forefathers, back in the days, they worked hard and they worked hard for you and I, for their children. That they might have better days and they might see better days. They worked hard. They didn't have. They sacrificed much in life. Some lives were taken and what have you. But yet still, we must not forget this. We must be thankful to God. Get in the habit of thanking God for your past, for your present, and your future. Man should always be thankful to God. Under any circumstances, I don't care what you are up against in life, whatever you are up against, give thanks and praise God because he is God and he is our creator. Hallelujah. Praise God. There might be someone today who would like to come. Brother Preacher, what must I do? What must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? What must I do to receive salvation? That's what it's all about. Preaching the gospel, souls being saved. Uh, what must I do? Romans 10 and 9 tells us that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe within thy heart that God hath raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Why don't you come today, wherever you are, wherever you are at this hour, examine your life, see where you stand with God. If you're not in Christ Jesus, ask the question, why not? If you're not in Christ, don't put off today for tomorrow because tomorrow, tomorrow may never come. Why don't you come? Why don't you confess him on this day? On this day, you can look back a thousand years from now and remember the, the time uh, that you confess Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Give thanks unto God. Yes. Give thanks unto God on all circumstances. Thank God. Thank Him for what He's doing for you even right now as I speak. We thank God.